The French and Indian War started in 1756 and ended in 1763. The war started because of France's expansion into the Ohio River Valley. According to Britain, France repeatedly tried to expand into British territory, especially Virginia. The French were able to quickly defeat young George Washington, Edward Braddock, and Governor William Shirley of Massachusetts during 1754 and 1755. In 1755, Governor Shirley moved hundreds of French settlers of Nova Scotia to separate British colonies because he, f he feared that they would ally with France if a military confrontation occurred. Three big factors hampered military actions throughout the period. Lack of interest back home, rival rivalries between American colonies, and France's advantage by persuading the Indians to join them. The British formally declared war against the French and their Indian allies in 1756. In 1757, because of their new British leader, William Pitt, the tides turned in their favor. After heavily bo borrowing for finances, Pitt paid Prussia to fight in Europe, and troops raised in North America by colonies were reimbursed. The British's first victory was won at the mouth of the St. Lawrence River at Lewisburg in July 1758. They took Fort Frontenac at the western end of the river a month later. The French lost their last foothold in 1760 in Canada. Spain later joined with the French to fight against the British. For the rest of the war, Britain continued gaining France's and Spain's territories. During the peace conference in 1763, British received Canada and Florida from France and Spain. The British allowed France to keep its West Indian sugar islands. Spain was also able to keep Louisiana. With the Europeans at the north and south and the opening of the Mississippi Valley, the American colonies were able to strengthen and expand westward. The war left the British in debt and their economy weak, so the Parliament started imposing taxes on the colonists. This was the reason for the colonists' revolt. Boycotts were more efficient because of the weakened economy. Due to the French and Indian War's outcome, the defeated French were not happy. So when they heard the Americans start revolting from Britain, it sparked their interest. They wanted to exact revenge on the British, so the best way to do it was to help Britain's enemy. A major key to the Americans gaining independence was the French's wealth and navy. The colonists were able to corn British General Cornwallis at Yorktown with the support of the French. The French also supplied the colonists with ammunition and gunpowder. The Stamp Act was created in 1765, where any printed material such as paper would be put on a heavy tax of 26 shillings and a stamp. This was opposed among colonists and would lead to protests against this act. Along the Sons of Liberty, they would lead against the Stamp Act with tar and feathering involved with that notion. At the time, the British was already deep in debt from the French and Indian War, which Ian talked about. America was outraged, for they could not use their own paper currency, and was seen as a violation of the right of no taxation without representation. Tar and feathering was used by mobs to humiliate the British, they poured hot tar on them, and then the protesters threw feathers to stick it on. Mob violence broke out against the British, and in 1766, most distributors resigned because of the violence against them. And as more and more colonists started to turn away from England, stamped cargo, it was no use to bring the Stamp Act in, and Parliament repealed it in 1766. The Boston Massacre took place in March 5, 1770. The whole attack started when the British Army was called in to help with a crowd of people who were unruly. The British Army started firing shots and killed five people. Paul Revere was a well-respected person in the community. He drew a picture of the incident. His version became reality. This incident was a very key to the separation of the British and the Patriot the Boston Tea Party was triggered by a protest of Massachusetts colonists dressed up as Mohawk Indians. They were led by the Sons of Liberty and dumped 342 chests of tea into the Boston Harbor in 1773. This started a new tax on tea, which was imposed by Great Britain's Parliament. 
The colonists accused Great Britain of taxing them without res- representation in Parliament. No taxation without representation is what the colonists said because they believed it wasn't fair to tax them randomly. I'm going to talk about the Declaration of Independence. It was signed on July 2, 1776. It was read out to the public on July 4, 1776. The most important thing in the Declaration is that all men are to be treated fair and equal with the same rights. The Declaration of Independence separated the 13 colonies from the rule of Great Britain. The Declaration has three parts. The famous preamble states that all men are to be treated equal and are to have the same rights. The second part was a list of charges against King George III. King George III realized over time that he wanted to that he wanted independence so he gave a speech about how he was wrong for being a tyrant and took punishment he was also ready to sign the declaration the third part is a conclusion which talks about the independence the colonists decided to call it the united states of america the declaration of independence states that god will protect the people from war and any other violence after the declaration was signed, was made america became a free country the king was no more to rule over america The document was signed by 56 delegates. It allowed the people to govern themselves. John Hancock was the first man to sign the Declaration of Independence. The most famous version of the Declaration of Independence is displayed in the National Archives in Washington, D.C. People rebel because they feel they need to fight for their rights. There are many laws that people may not agree with, so they rebel. Some slaves rebel because they feel that their kind should not be treated in such a bad way. Slavery is what I think is what makes people rebel because it was wrong to make people do other people's dirty work. Some people also rebel because it might feel better to release their anger out on other people, which I think is wrong.